General Strelzin has just informed me he's making Jeff Williams available for an interview. Fred, family investigator John Smith, podcasters Tim and Lance, everyone has wanted to speak with the chief, but no one has ever been allowed. Maggie, nice to meet you. Sorry, good to see you, Jeff. Come on in, sure. You know, we know you probably have a lot to say about some accusations, rumors out there about yourself. You know, I'm sure you've heard some of those. You know, actually very limited. Um, I'm not a big social media guy. What has been going around the internet is that a woman who has been called Witness A drove by the scene earlier than 746 when Cecil responded and says she saw SUV 001 at the scene. So the idea out there is that SUV 001 was your vehicle, that you possibly had something to do with Morris' disappearance? I wasn't at the scene the night of February 9th, 2004. I wasn't on duty at the time of the accident. Was SUV 001 your vehicle? No, for a patrol. No, the town never, never provided the chief of police right. a cruiser. Yeah. No. Do you know who was driving it? Uh, Sergeant Smith was, yeah. So you didn't go by the scene? You didn't... No. No, I did not go to the scene that night. We need to look at this through the lens of, right. of what was going on with that call. We weren't responding to the largest missing person case in the state of New Hampshire's history. We were responding to a simple car accident. What do you think happened tomorrow? You know, I've spent sleepless nights since being recontacted about this because then you start you start thinking about it and you start playing Jeff what what could you have done what did we miss what how did this happen how could this happen how could this happen I wish I had answers for you I, I mean I wish I wish God I wish we had answers how many search and rescue missions have you done I'd say I've been participating and managing in the hundreds wow and how many of those are still outstanding missing people? There's still two that are uh, unfounded. And Maura is one of them? Um, she is. It's also equipped with a FLIR unit, which is forward-looking infrared. So had she been out there and giving off any heat signal, they would have been able to pick that up. After covering the significant area, at least 112 and outlying roads over or probably 10 miles distance, the end result was we had no human foot tracks uh, going into the woodlands off of the roadways that were not either cleared or accounted for. At the end of that day, the consensus was she did not leave the roadway. In case they missed something, a second search was organized, 10 days after the crash, to inspect the woods. This time, with three cadaver dogs who were trained specifically to find human remains. So at that point, you could have been looking for a deceased person. Yes. Those dog teams uh, went into the wood lines and searched in different segments on both sides of Route 112 within uh, the half-mile radius. Anytime we're searching, we're looking for people, yes, but more importantly, we're looking for clues. In clues, you mean like clothing or a backpack or a cell phone or something? Anything. Any, any human object. Did you ever find any? Uh, no clues, to my knowledge, that were directly related to Mora. Chuck did give us other information that is encouraging. So basically what has happened is since we have started working on this, the state police are looking into, or if you want to say reopening the case. So they're going back and re-interviewing everybody. everybody. They've established three task forces. They're going back to the very beginning, looking at all the forensics, re-examining everything from day one on. Law enforcement's re-engagement in Mora's case is promising. The state has even agreed to give us a piece of evidence that they've never before released publicly, the ATM footage. Mora's family has been fighting for this. 
13 years. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a series of shots taken every three or four seconds. So it's not like an actual video. Do you recognize that jacket, though? I don't. Yeah, I don't either. I don't need to ask Mar. Oh, no, it's Mar. After almost a year of connecting with people in Mora's life, I feel confident that Mora didn't willingly walk away. There's nothing in her history that hints that she would leave her family forever. Something bad happened to her, and it's possible she's no longer alive. I hope I'm wrong, but my gut tells me I'm not. Maybe now, with the police digging back in, they'll go over what Art and I found and compare it to information they keep private. Or maybe someone will see this series and finally reach out to law enforcement with the tip they have been waiting for. I hope our quest for answers will produce results. I hope our work gives the Murrays the break they've been looking for, for 13 years. If somebody comes forward seeing this, right. that would be what it takes. Right. Somebody that nobody knows about. Right. Somebody knows something. And There's no doubt about it. And they've been afraid to come out for right. their personal safety. But now that this has reached the level that it has, maybe they'll be a little less reluctant to remain in the shadows. I think this is all just beginning. I think there's going to be a lot of information. I think you guys are going to get a lot of answers. Well, <laughs> it's a direct response to uh, you folks working on the case, and we'll be forever uh, in your debt for it. Something good's going to happen, and I believe it. And not just because I have to believe it, but I do believe it. This is a break we've been looking for for 13 years. Mara knows that we're pulling out all the stops. Come on, kid. We'll find you. Thank you.